Have you heard about deep sleep mode with the ESP32? It's pretty awesome. What it allows you to do is take the ESP32 microcontroller and put it into this ultra low power state so it's not sucking up all your battery power. Like let's say you've got some IoT project and you just need it to transmit information every once in a while. There's no reason to have it going full blast because that's gonna run your battery out in no time. You put it into deep sleep mode and hey, this thing will last a ton longer. But how do you wake up from deep sleep? Well, there's three different ways. One way is using an internal timer. So at a certain interval, every set interval you wake up. Another one is there's these pins on the ESP32 that are touch pins. So basically you touch the pin and that will trigger a wake up of the ESP32. But then there's also external wake ups. An external wake up, as the name implies, allows an external input to trigger a wake up on demand. They're super handy. And that really fits a bunch of use cases. If you only want your board to turn on when certain things happen, then these external wake ups are super handy. Now there's two external wake ups that you can use, EXT0 and EXT1. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use EXT0. By the end of this video, you'll be able to put your ESP32 to sleep and wake it up with an external trigger. We'll go line by line through the code. Let's do this. Now, before we start, I wanna let you know that we have already made an in-depth video about using the internal wake up timer with the ESP32 to wake it up from deep sleep. And you can check the description for a link to that lesson. But the external wake ups are a little different. So imagine your ESP32 laying down to bed, deep in sleep, probably having some nice dreams about bits and bytes or who knows what, or electric sheep, something like that. But then all of a sudden, you have to wake it up right now because something really important just happened. How do you do that? Well, you use an external wake up. And we're gonna talk about external wake up zero. I like to think of EXT zero as a vigilant guard that you can post next to different entrances on your ESP32. Now the different entrances are the GPIO or general purpose input output pins. You know, so like all the little pins on the chip, those are your GPIO. Now there's only specific GPIO where you can post EXT0. And depending on the development board you're using, those pins, you know, like the actual number of the pin will change. There's gonna be a link in the description to a post all about this, and it will show a common pinout. Now it's gonna depend on which ESP32 development board you have as far as these specific pins where you can use EXT0. But on a pinout diagram, they're generally labeled with the RTC GPIO. So what you can do is assign EXT0 to one of those pin numbers. And you tell it, hey, I want you to either look for a low voltage or a high voltage. And what that EXT0, our vigilant guard will do, is it's just gonna sit there and wait until it sees the voltage that it's looking for. And as soon as it sees it, bam, it's gonna wake up the ESP32 out of its slumber. Just like that, on demand. All right, so hopefully this concept sounds cool to you, it's sort of making sense. Let's drill this home with an example. So what we're gonna do is set up a super easy button circuit. And what's gonna happen is every time I press the button, it's gonna wake up my ESP32 out of deep sleep. My ESP32 will wake up, it'll do something, in our case, it'll do some serial printing, and then it's gonna go back to bed and sleep and sleep, then bam, I'm gonna wake it up again. It's a tough life these ESP 32s. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. So to set this up, I'm going to be using digital pin four on my ESP 32 breakout. For the example, I'm using the Vroom DA module. So I just connect that up to one side of a momentary push button and the other side of the momentary push button, I'm hooking up to ground. So now let's go ahead and dive into the code. And all the code that I'm about to show you is available on our website. A link will be in the description and you can just grab this as a little copy feature. You can copy the code and paste it right into the uh, Arduino IDE and get up and running. But let's go line by line through this code so you know exactly how to do this. All right, so I've got some comments here just kind of outlining what I'd like to do. So the first thing I wanna do is assign the pin number that I'm going to use for EXT0. That's what I'll do up here. 
Then in the setup, I'm gonna set the pin mode for that pin. Then I'm gonna actually configure this external wake up. It's one line of code, it's really easy. And then finally, we'll put the ESP32 into deep sleep. So let me write some code around this. This is super minimal code to do what we're trying to do here. Okay, so here's the code. There's like four lines of code, not too much, which is cool that it's so few lines of code. All right, so first we said we're gonna set the wake up pin. I'm just picking pin four. I name it wake up pin and it's a constant integer. The pin number is not gonna change, right? So make it constant. Okay, so it's gonna be pin four that we're gonna be using for this ext0. Then down in setup, we set the pin mode of that wake up pin and we set it to an input pull up. And what that does, is it pulls the voltage of that pin high. So that means if anybody's looking at that voltage, if you're like measuring that voltage or doing a digital read of that voltage, or if you're like EXT zero and you're monitoring that voltage, what you would see is a high voltage because it's pulling it up to a high voltage. And why we wanted a high voltage will become clear here in a moment. So let's talk about this next line of code. And this is the key line of code right here for using EXT0. It is the ESP sleep enable EXT0 wake up. That's a pretty straightforward name for a function like EXT0, you know which one you're using, right? Okay, so this takes two parameters. It wants to know which pin are you going to assign EXT0 to. And then it wants to know what state should trigger the wake up. So should it be a low voltage or a high voltage that should trigger that wake up? So why did we go with the low voltage here? Well, it's because of how we set up our circuit. If you recall in our circuit, we have pin four connected to one side of a momentary push button and the other side is connected to ground. So when we're not pressing the button, the voltage, thanks to this input pull up, is going to be high. And if the voltage is high, that means that EXT0 will not be triggered. So EXT0 is looking there, it sees this high voltage thanks to this input pull up. When we press that button, now pin four is connected to ground and it's gonna pull that down to a ground voltage or a low state. And so that low state, once we press that button, is what will trigger EXT0 to wake up. So you might be wondering what this GPIO underscore numt does here. Well, GPIO numt is an enumeration type and it's used to represent the different GPIO pins on the ESP32. And what this type does is it helps ensure that only valid GPIO numbers are actually passed into this function. And so what we're doing here is we're casting, sort of like converting this designated pin number that we set, that integer four, as a GPIO numt type. Now, if none of that makes any sense, don't worry. It's definitely not essential to understand deep sleep. I just want you to know that's, uh, that's what's going on there. And that one line of code is what allows us to set EXT0 on a specific pin. And what's gonna happen when we put our ESP32 into deep sleep is it's just gonna snooze. It's not going to wake up not until pin four goes to a low state. And that's when EXT0 jumps to action. It's probably got like a megaphone, wake up! And the ESP32 is gonna wake up pretty fast. But before it can wake up, we have to actually put it into sleep. And that's what this final line of code does. ESP deep sleep start. So this is putting our ESP32 to bed. But you might notice our sketch doesn't really do anything. I mean, okay, we're putting the, ESP32 to bed and we've set this EXT0 to wake it up, but what's it do when it's awake? Like what's going on here? Well, let's add a little bit of code and we'll just have it print some stuff to the serial monitor and maybe we'll monitor how many times we press the button, something like that. So let me add some code.
So I added a little bit of code here. Let's go ahead and talk through it. So the first thing I did is I added this integer variable called boot count. And what I'm going to use it to do is track the number of times we pr essentially we press the button. So every time the ESP32 wakes up from deep sleep, we're going to increment this boot count variable. Now you might be wondering, what does this RTC data ATTR stand for? Well, here's the deal. When your ESP32 goes into deep sleep, all of the variables that you've saved in your program, they just lost, right? They go away, they're, they're not preserved. They do not persist, right? So I can't like increment this value and set up and then hope to get that value back once it wakes up from deep sleep, it's all gone. But there is some memory associated with the real time clock, RTC clock on the ESP32 where you can save some data. And this RTC data attribute is what assigns a variable to that memory location. So basically it will allow that memory to persist when the ESP32 wakes up again from deep sleep. Hopefully that makes some sense. All right, so we've got this variable boot count. The next thing we do in setup is we actually wanna do something. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna start serial communication with serial begin. Then we're gonna increment boot count, this plus plus, just means add one to boot count. We could write like boot count equals boot count plus one. The plus plus is just a handy way to do that. And then finally what we do is we print what the boot number is. So that's like all we're doing. Like that's what this sketch does. Notice I've got nothing down in the loop here. And that's because the ESP32, it goes to sleep at the bottom of setup. Once your ESP32 goes to sleep, the code in here, it stops running. So loop never gets executed. So all the stuff you need to do in your program needs to happen before you put it to sleep, very likely up in your setup. So maybe for your application, it'll wake up, it'll connect to Wi-Fi, read some sensor values, send some data up to the cloud, you know, whatever it might do. Maybe it blinks some LEDs, who knows what you wanna do, right? But that's gonna happen before you put it to sleep. So what we're gonna do is print some stuff off to the serial monitor. So another little piece of code I added here was this delay. And the reason I've added this delay is because the ESP32 will wake up really fast once EXT0 sees that low voltage. And what I don't wanna have happen is for me to press the button once, like let's say I'm just holding the button for a little bit, the ESP32 might wake up and go to sleep multiple times just while I'm pressing that button for that short period of time. So this delay is just an easy way to make sure that my single button press only triggers the wake up once. And then, you know, I'm just printing something to the serial monitor here. So let's go ahead and upload this code and then uh, we'll check out the serial monitor, see what it does. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and press this button. I got a bunch of buttons here, but we're just gonna press this one right here. Okay, so what do we see? So it spits out a bunch of stuff, but what we're interested here is what we actually did in our program. So it says boot number two, and then it says night night. Now the reason it's showing boot number two is because when it powers on, that acts as boot one, right? So this was zero, we add one. So it was one when it went to first sleep the first time, uh, and then we just pressed it. So that's why it increments to two. Okay, I guess what I could have done is put the boot number above that and it could have been, anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead, uh, press it again, see what happens. All right, there it is, boot number three, night, night. So ESP32 is just sleeping sleeping and then bam wake it up it's pretty ruthless i can't stand being woken up really fast like that i bet the esp32 hates ext0 i don't know maybe not so you might have some more questions about esp32 deep sleep in general and also about how you might use that timer to wake up the ESP32 at set intervals. Well, the next video you should watch right now is this video right here. This video goes in depth on both of those topics. You can check it out right here.